You are carrying more ammunition and have more firepower than the entire rest of your squad put together. You are who they call on to cover their retreat, and you are who they call on to bust the horde when it comes charging. You are heavy infantry. All right, you scum, suit up! If you have not already watched the Units, Roles, and Loadouts Primer, the General HVZ video, and the Infantry video, please go watch those now. Links will be in the description. I will be building on those videos, so it's important that you watch them before you watch this one. The title is simply heavy because it's easier to say in conversation, but it is, in truth, heavy infantry. There is a somewhat blurry line between the medium infantry that I talked about in the infantry video and heavy infantry. But there is enough of a difference in the role that they will be used for and the loadouts that they will carry that it warranted having its own video. The term heavy does not simply refer to the blaster that is being used. It isn't simply a matter of having a fully automatic blaster. You can fill the role of a heavy with a semi-automatic blaster. The term heavy refers to the ability to maintain a constant high rate of fire so that you can fulfill roles like um, covering fire, suppressing fire, and horde busting, and occasionally killing certain super zombies or enemies that require more than one hit. To that end, you need to have enough ammunition to be able to fulfill that role. So it's as much about how much ammunition that, as you're carrying as the fire rate of your blaster. I'll briefly go over the basics real quick and then we'll get into harnesses. All right, first off, as with any loadout, you're going to want a battle belt with a dump pouch and as with any of the infantry, you're going to want knee pads or possibly full shin guards. Let's take a look at harnesses. Aha! This is my standard heavy infantry harness. It is a Condor Defender heavy plate carrier. It's got molly going all the way around, including on the sides, which allows me to attach a, a, an inordinate number of pouches and stuff. So on the back, I do have a Camelback, highly recommended. On the side, I have another water bottle pouch. I usually keep a sports drink in here. I have my throwable pouch. I have my phone and glove pouch. I have an admin pouch, which has tools. I'll usually keep a map of the site in there, as well as a small first aid kit. I've got a regular uh, pistol holster, and I have a, uh, my radio pouch. But most importantly, I have five Condor AAK pouches across the front, which perfectly fit two Nerf stick magazines. Now, there is no actual hard line as to how many magazines you need to be carrying to qualify as heavy. It's simply a matter of, can you fulfill the role? Do you have enough ammunition to maintain that constant high rate of fire? I generally put that at six magazines. When you get, if you only have four, you're really kind of tra traipsing into the medium infantry load because you're not going to be able to maintain that high rate of fire for very long unless you have a dedicated ammo mule in your squad who's going around checking to see what people's ammo levels are and top, you know, giving them f full mags and taking their empty mags and topping them off and whatnot. Um, so I generally would have a minimum of six plus one in the blaster. You can go as high as ten very easily. This loadout obviously will. Much more than that, and you're probably carrying more than you're ever going to use in one given mission. Most of these HVZs will do a one hour, maybe two hour long mission, and sometimes those missions get done early. And so carrying more ammunition than you need is kind of wasteful. It's just a waste of energy, a waste of, you know, your time to, to, to a degree. Unless you are the dedicated ammo mule. Let's take a look at that more ridiculous loadout. Naha! Now I can no longer go through doors, but I can carry a genuinely obscene amount of ammunition. Those of you who are paying attention will notice that, yes, this is my hammer shot belt that I recently did a video on. And I noted in that video that I could swap out any of the hammer shots that were in double AK pouches with a pair of magazines. So I'm now carrying, I believe, 32 stick magazines. And I still have a pair of hammer shots. I've got a regular one, and I have my mega hammer shot for taking out the supers. Now obviously this is definitely the extreme level where this, this is very cumbersome, this is very awkward, not particularly practical, but it would allow you to fill the role of both heavy and ammo mule at the same time. You have plenty of magazines for yourself to be able to be putting out a ridiculous amount of firepower, but also the ability to dole out ammunition to other people. So quite often 
your ammo mule is going to be a heavy infantry. It just makes sense for them to be filling both roles with that. So generally you're going to go somewhere less than this, but I know plenty of people that run this level of magazine loadout because they know they already are slow. They're like me. They got bad knees and a bad back or, or what have you. They know they're not going to be running, so they might as well go ahead and burden them, you know, encumber themselves to be able to carry ridiculous amounts of additional ammunition for everybody. It is a functional heavy loadout option. Let's now take a look at blasters. Now, as I said, it's not actually necessary to carry a fully automatic blaster to be able to fulfill the role of a heavy infantry. You can do so with a semi-automatic semi blaster simply by pulling the trigger really, really quickly. You can then provide that heavy firepower that is necessary. However, generally, unless you're an absolute prodigy, you're not going to be able to pull that, pull that trigger as fast as someone is able to fire a full auto blaster. And for things like suppressing fire and covering fire, and to a degree, horde busting, you really want that just terrifying rate of fire that makes people instinctively duck. Obviously, they're not really in danger, but when somebody is firing 10, 15, 20 rounds a second at you, your instinct is to duck or to flinch or to, to veer off course. And that's kind of what you're going for with heavy infantry is that constant high rate of fire that has that additional effect that sustained fire might not quite have. But let's take a look at some blasters that kind of blur the line even further. The question has obviously been posed, what about select fire? Where does that put me? Well, like I've said, it, it's not necessarily about full auto versus semi-auto. So select fire is great for, for both. Definitely select fire is perfectly acceptable for heavy infantry, but it also works just as well for medium infantry. It gives you the controllability of semi-automatic fire, but then gives you the, opportunity, the option of flipping to full auto and simply hosing. Now it's, it's nice because it would allow a, a medium infantry to temporarily fill the position of, to fill that role of heavy infantry. So, you're on you know, a scouting mission or something and you need suppressing fire, you can dump the one magazine at full auto because you have select fire, but then switch it back to semi-auto and conserve the rest of your ammunition. Well, the same thing works with heavy going the other direction. You could stay with semi-automatic for when you don't need to hose, but switch back to full auto when suddenly there's a horde to bust or covering fire or suppressing fire is needed. And if you have the, the ammo capacity to be able to do that more regularly, then you really do qualify as heavy infantry. Another blaster that kind of blurs the line is the Stampede, because while it's not actually select fire, unless you have the rate of fire dialed to 11, you can generally get one shot off with a single quick trigger pull, but you have the option of going to full auto just by holding the trigger down. There's a reason that I still believe that the Stampede is an excellent heavy infantry weapon for HVZ. That option of doing one or the other. Plus it's just a fabulous beefy weapon and I love it. Getting away from magazine fed blasters, obviously any of the high capacity rival blasters, the full auto ones, are fantastic for heavy because they just hold so much ammunition before you even have to reload. With Even with 22 round magazines, I'm reloading every 22 shots. This one I don't have to reload for at least 200 shots. This thing can hold in one go almost as much as I can with 10 magazines on me because these hold a little bit more than 200, really. And they're very easy to reload from, you know, from just handfuls from a dump pouch or paintball tubes or, or whatever else you found that allows you to reload them quickly. They really are an excellent heavy option. <laughs> Obviously the very best option if it's available to you is a proton pack because they just hold an absolutely absurd amount of ammunition. Tier will hold 2,000 rounds and because Tier has a variable rate of fire, it's almost like having select fire, where I can turn it down and have a conservative rate of fire, or I can crank it to 11 and just hose everything. That's really the, the true epitome of what most people imagine when they hear heavy infantry. But there are lots of places in between. Naturally, all of your standard dedicated full auto blasters also work just fine. The Rapid Strike, the Hyper Fire, or even the Infinis. This one kind of especially because it allows you to very easily top off your magazine, though it's a little bit more complicated to modify. But obviously any of these can be modified into a heavy battle rifle by having some sort of a master key. 
and that's that's kind of a, a nice advantage of them. Because again, you are going to want that super zombie killing um, capability if that's a mechanic of the game you're at. Now I'm going to take a look at a couple of blasters that I don't recommend and kind of tell you why. The Titan! Now this is obviously very thematically appropriate to the heavy because it's a minigun with a 50 round drum. But it's extremely cumbersome to reload in my opinion. And that's kind of enough of a detraction that I really wouldn't recommend it. Uh, unless you've gotten really practiced at switching magazines from that awkward underhand thing. Um, not one that I would put high on the list, but definitely thematically appropriate, and if you want to run it, you go right ahead. The Jupiter. Not only is it thoroughly not thematically appropriate because it's so tiny, the, the low mag capacity and the ridiculously high rate of fire that some of them have, you can get lower rate of fire ones, means that you tend to not be able to produce that constant rate of fire, where it's really BURT and you have to reload. BURT and you have to reload. BURT! And that's not really providing what the heavy is intended to provide. This is, however, a fantastic sidearm for almost any loadout because of that ridiculous rate of fire. It gives anybody the ability to just burn and hose one real quick burst. I've seen uh, Abel Crewman Jose take out an entire column of zombies. I think it was five zombies with one burst from his Jupiter. They were all stacked up behind a zombie with a shield, and he was just out of line with the, the column and hit the entire column and took all five of them out, headshots, right down the line. And it was one of those moments where they're like, not even mad, that was awesome. Um, so a great sidearm for any ro loadout, but not a great primary for a heavy in my opinion. Now if you happen to have dual proton packs feeding a pair of Jupiters, that's an entirely different story. That's what Out of Darts ran at Ragnar Oktoberfest two years ago, and it was epic to see in battle. Let's talk about sidearms, because that is still important for heavy. So we're back to looking at my actual personal loadout, heavy loadout, which had a pair of strifes. Now these are my auto strifes, and I don't actually recommend auto strifes, because the primary is full auto, your secondary should be semi-auto. Uh, and it, the reason I recommend two strifes is it allows you to then fire in two directions at once, which while you don't have the quite the firepower, say, of a fully automatic blaster hosing back and forth, this gives you the ability to shoot at multiple targets at once with sustained aimed shots, which is a whole different level of heavy firepower. You also are still going to want something that's able to take out super zombies, if that's the mechanic that that game is going with. So I have my mega hammer shot, you might also have a big shock or a hot shock stuck in somewhere. Whatever your, your preference. I do then have my, my double strike, which is kind of this loadout's suicide jolt, where one last shot for the zombies and then the last one is for me. Just for thematic reasons, because I'm an old theater kid. So yeah, a little bit heavier because heavy. If you're going for a lighter heavy loadout, the 6 mag, you want to run with, the, uh, with a recon unit or a mission unit, you might go down to something a little bit less cumbersome so that you can run better. Possibly. Again, really a very, very versatile loadout. The, the number of different blasters that fit into it and the configuration that you can go with and still fall into this category is huge. It really comes down to functionality. Alright, so to sum up, the key to being heavy infantry is the ability to maintain that constant high rate of fire. To that you need to have a blaster that's capable of producing that high rate of fire and enough ammunition to maintain it. But it actually doesn't limit what role, additional role, you can fill. Obviously there are squad positions and units where heavy infantry is key and very valuable. The command column is going to want to have heavy infantry. The rear guard is going to want to have heavy infantry. The vanguard is definitely going to want to have heavy infantry. Hunting units are probably going to want to have at least one heavy infantry as their squad support. Um, feral squad is a perfectly good place to have heavies. But you can also fill roles like Mission Squad and Recon if you have something like Select Fire or even, even if you have full auto but you're only running the six magazines, you're not going to be so over encumbered that you're going to be really that much slower than any of the other positions. And those roles may very well find themselves in need of a squad support heavy infantry person, somebody who is able to fill that role while also doing the other roles. For mission squads, 
they may need you to provide suppressing fire so that they can get into where the MacGuffin is, the, the mission MacGuffin, whatever, and then to give covering fire while they get back out and to cover them as they make a run for it to get the MacGuffin to wherever it needs to go to. That is something where you might want to have a heavy in your squad. So you're not actually limited to any particular role on the battlefield based on having a heavy loadout. But it gives you the ability to fulfill that heavy role. All right. I look forward to seeing you on the battlefield. Bangarang! <laughs>